Hi guys, here I'm going to show you three simple tips for quickly understanding large, complex, annoying, huge spreadsheets in Excel. And I'm going to be using this sort of baby version of a spreadsheet that I was given a week ago. It's modeled after that spreadsheet, which was given to me by someone who has paid way too much money <laughs> to make something so horrible. And I'm going to show you the steps that I went through in order to deconstruct it and actually figure out how the hell it worked. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So here we have three tabs, Summary, Demand, Data, and each one has different aspects of the picture. Things that need to be linked together. So if I change something over here, it should affect many other worksheets. Now, the one I was working in had maybe 20 different worksheets with 100 columns in each worksheet and a little bit under 200 rows in every worksheet. So it was a real pain to figure things out. Now, the first step, the first tip, the first thing you do is you want to say, OK, I see these numbers, but what's a number and what's a formula? So very easily, we go to the formulas tab. We can go to show formulas. Show formulas is a lifesaver. So let's click it. Now, it's kind of annoying. It automatically makes your columns really big. What a pain. But what it does is it quickly allows you to see what's a formula and what's not a formula. So I can say, OK, this worksheet has a lot of formulas. Now that you see that there's a lot of formulas, maybe you want to quickly breeze through them. Let's see, OK, are we referencing this worksheet? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, oh, nope, we got a reference to another worksheet. Now, this isn't the most efficient way to figure that out, but it's just that when all the formulas are visible, you can quickly see that. And the beautiful thing is when your formulas are visible, you don't have to double click a cell to have a visual representation of what it's affecting on the same worksheet or what it uses in its formula, I mean. So if I click here, automatically highlights those guys. Click here, automatically highlights this dude, which it uses. So you can very easily see what it's working on just by, you don't even have to use the mouse. Just go down, see how things are related. Okay, so I know that table where is not a formula right here. This is a hard-coded value. It doesn't apply to any of these guys over here. So you can see that even though you'd expect everything in the total column to be a formula, that it isn't. And that was a real pain in the worksheet that I was using. So one thing that I did is I wanted to highlight the cells that were not formulas, where I expected them to be formulas. And that brings me either to my next tip or the sub-tip. I think there's going to be a lot more than three tips in this tutorial. <laughs> So let's say that I'm concerned about the total column. I want to see where there are or are not formulas. And you don't have to have formulas visible to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this column. And let's say it's a big column, like the one I was working with. So you've got 200 rows or so. So we select it, and we can go to the Home tab, Find and Select, go to Special. And what we can do here is we can select formulas if we want to, numbers, text, logicals, errors. The error one is actually really helpful, but has nothing to do with this tutorial. So we can click constants, click constants, hit OK, and voila. So if you've got a big column like that, you want to see what's not a formula, which means it's a value that you might have to input by hand, or in this case, you definitely do, go ahead and highlight it in yellow. And the way that I made it so it would only select in a specific area is I selected those cells and then I did go to special. If you had selected just a single, if you have a single cell selected and then you go to home, find and select, go to special, select constants, then you're going to get a bunch of selections. So it'll look through the entire worksheet. So you can also just select a, a row or a column to do that. Now, if I want to remove show formulas so it goes back to normal I have a very nice visual cue there's something up with this cell so I can go there and see oh it's not a formula these guys are formulas when you go through it you can look in the formula bar to see a formula all right let's take a look at the demand worksheet what I want to show you on this spreadsheet is how to figure out if any data here is specifically referencing something from another a specific worksheet so what here references the data tab? One way to do that, easy peasy, it's so great, just hit Control F and we have our lovely find and replace window type data. 
hit find all and it gives you this wonderful wonderful little screen that shows you the two cells here that reference the data worksheet now it looks for the word data so it doesn't always mean that it's just the data worksheet so maybe you want to narrow it down and put an exclam exclamation point there hit find all just to make sure that it's referencing the data worksheet because that's how you reference another worksheet the name of the worksheet then an exclamation point and now that we've clicked find all instead of just find next we have this little window we can see where it is we can see it's the what workbook sheet name cell value and the formula itself so we can do a very quick little check here to see if this is it is what we are looking for and if you have a large list that's great you can scroll up and down through that or what I really like to do just click any one of these options you'll see over here that it will go to the cell once you click it just hit control a it selects the cells for you great but let's make it a little bit easier to see and analyze especially in the larger spreadsheets where it's not all going to fit on the worksheet at once or in the viewable window and let's go ahead and change the background color so now we have very quickly highlighted all cells here that reference the data worksheet let's say we did it from the summary tab control F want to look for data find all we couldn't find what you're looking for don't you worry one thing that you can do hit options and by default it searches just a single sheet the current sheet go down here click workbook find all and there you go it takes you to the first occurrence now you can use this not only to look for the worksheet tabs but to look for anything to look for any text let's say I want to look for population I don't know where that is so I look pop population okay find next bam there we go now let's say that you want to do a different kind of search you might want to change look in from formulas to values to notes to even comments so find and replace is a lifesaver it's so awesome and the best part once you find what you're looking for hit find all and you'll get all the listings here click down here hit control a to select all of them change the background color it's awesome all right now let's move on to the next and last tip which is really probably what you're going to use most so I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that guy let's go to the data tab now here I know that I have two cells that you input by hand they are not formulas which means someone's going to come here and change them and I want to know what changing the monthly growth rate is going to change within my workbook so we select the cell go to formulas you can choose trace precedence or trace dependence since this is hard-coded not a formula there is no precedent that means it doesn't reference any other cell so if I click this the trace precedence command requires that the active cell contain a formula which includes valid references so precedence means select all the cells or point us to all the cells that this cell uses to generate its number so you can use that if you start at the end using a formula you want to see what makes it up but here we want to see what this is used in so we do trace dependence so I click that and we get this lovely little thing I'll show you in a moment what it looks like if it's on your own worksheet it's a blue arrow very easy to see where it goes to but if it if it applies to another worksheet you're going to see something like this a dotted line and a little worksheet icon and you can actually navigate to where it's used the thing is you just can't click this you can't click that little icon I don't know why they did that it's really stupid it's really annoying what you have to do is carefully move your mouse pointer over the dotted line it doesn't even change it doesn't even change to a little hand to make it so that you know you can click it so you double click that okay let's do it again there we go <laughs> it's a little finicky and here we have the go to window now everywhere that this formula is used in another worksheet we're going to have an entry here and when we click it so you can have many entries here the annoying thing is you can't actually resize this window at least as far as I know you can't and I hate that so if you want to figure out where the references are if you have many of them you may just want to choose a specific one click it once and then go down here and you can kind of move the little cursor over 
and see where it is. So we see it's in the demand worksheet on cell B4. If you want, you can hit OK or double click and it'll take you right to that cell. So I can see that it's used right here, monthly growth rate. So let's do that again. I go here. And if you want to remove all the arrows that are generated, you just go to the formulas tab, hit remove arrows. Life's easy. So let's do that quickly. Trace dependence, okay. Try to click the dotted line, okay. Double click this, okay. Now we're here, so I know that it uses, th so that this cell uses that piece of data. Now let's figure out where this cell is used. So formulas tab, trace dependence, and these are the blue arrows I was talking about. So we can see that this cell is used here, 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 all over. Now let's figure out where one of these cells are used. So I'm going to click it once again, trace dependence. Okay. It's used here. It's used here and it's used somewhere else. So very carefully, we try to click the dotted line again. Okay. Double click. Okay. Here we go. So it is used here. Now let's see, where is this cell used? Now this seems redundant or repetitive, but this is what you have to do to figure out how everything is linked and it is a pain. Okay, I can see the cell is used here and here. So click here. Let's see, is this cell used anywhere? Trace dependence, right here. Total cost. Is this cell used anywhere? Nope, thank goodness we've made it to the end. Or almost. We now have to go to this guy real quick. Okay, where is he used? Trace dependent. Okay, this guy, trace dependent. Okay, down here is where it's going. So the more of these little blue arrows you have, it can get kind of confusing, but we see that it all ends in total cost. So what that has told us is that if we by hand change the number for monthly growth rate right here, it will end up affecting our total cost. This is the beauty, the benefit of spreadsheets, is that you change one number somewhere and it updates everything for you to tell you how much it's going to cost. If you need to buy more stuff or you need to hire more people or fire people, whatever you need to do. And that's really the process you have to go through with spreadsheets to figure out how they work. It's a pain, but it's doable. And those are the tips for going through them. That's what I do. So formulas tab, we've got show formulas. We've got trace precedence, trace dependence. You now know how to go between the worksheets when a cell references another worksheet and you use trace dependence, trace precedence. You just click the little dotted line. And then of course, we've got the home tab with find and select go to special, constants for regular cells, formulas for formula cells. And then of course, don't forget about find or find and replace. And if you want more options, you click the little options button and click find all to see all of the occurrences. You can select one, hit control A to select them all at once, and then change the background color. Changing the background color is great for big spreadsheets. Remember that because then you can zoom out and you can very quickly, easily see, even if you have really small cells, I can go and I can see yellow, yellow. Maybe there's yellow over here, over here, over here. So highlighting the background of cells is very helpful for when you need to evaluate a very large spreadsheet. So that's it for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.